So good evening, everybody. It's so good to have you all here with us. This is a really special evening because we have a symphony that is premiering in this city. So I want to introduce you to Dr. Steve Rothstein. He's an, the artistic director and composer for the Judaic Sacred Music Foundation. He has a PhD in music composition from UCLA, and he teaches music theory composition at UCLA Extension. So we're so happy to have him here. He's the composer of this symphony, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how the symphony came about, how he used all these wonderful themes from the high holidays. And we're looking forward to then seeing the actual or listening to the actual symphony on September 18th. So Steve. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Rabbi Singer. Can you all hear me? Good. Yep. All right. Yes. Thank you, Rabbi Singer. It's really a pleasure and honor to be here and meet so many of you. Um, I wish we could be in person, but Zoom is good, and hopefully I'll get to meet you uh, in person or see you in the audience uh, in the concert in, in uh, about three, two and a half weeks or so. Um, yes, my name is Steve Rothstein, and I am a composer, and I work for the Judaic Sacred Music Foundation, which uh, focuses on uh, our main mission is to commission new classical music. Uh, rooted in Judaic tradition. And what I'm going to do today, today's presentation, is to tell you a little bit briefly about our foundation, a little bit about my background, and then get right into the music. Because even though we're going to have the world premiere of this High Holy Day Symphony that uses melodies and motives from Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur in all four movements, we have already recorded the full symphony in Europe. And I was the last part of the recording took place just in July couple couple months ago. So you are some of the very few people that are hearing uh, the last two movements, excerpts of it, um, uh, before the actual premiere. So I'm going to give you a little tour. We won't play the whole thing because it's, it's, it's about 45 minute work, but I'll give you some tours and you can hear how I've worked with the melodies and, get, and what, we will have time for a Q&A. And I'd love to hear your questions and have a little discussion after each movement for a little bit. So. Um, with that being said, let me jump in right to this little PowerPoint presentation. And as I mentioned, um, I work for the Judaic Sacred Music Foundation, and our foundation is relatively new. It was started in uh, 2014 by our president and founder, Dr. Robert H. Freilich, who combined his love of classical music <coughs> and Judaism to create this, uh, this foundation. Um, our three main central mission points are to commission new music, and we have done that, especially during the pandemic was a challenge, but we, we commissioned a lot of smaller works uh, for Passover, for Hanukkah, for Rosh Hashanah again, um, and we have a lot of these works on our on our website. And I have with us today our director of development, Jerry Krautman, who's going to talk to you later. Jerry, you want to give a wave? And maybe, Jerry, if you would, could you put in the chat box our website link so people can take a look? So all of our music is on our website as well, all the music we've commissioned. We've been, uh, we produce annual, annual concerts and events, and we do educational outreach. And what you're seeing tonight is part of our educational outreach program. Um, this is our website, and I, it will be in the web in the chat box shortly if it's not already there. And you can register it with us, and you will get all all the news about upcoming events and programming on. We do a lot of programming online, and a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, just a little bit about myself, real quickly. As Rabbi Singer mentioned, I I uh, I'm a composer, and I am the artistic director of the foundation. Um, I studied at UCLA, been teaching music theory and composition for about 20 years. And I always say, if I won the lottery, I still would teach. I can't give it up, I'm hooked. Um, talking about music, teaching about music, the more I teach, the more I learn, I can't give that up. And so it's an integral part of who I am. Um, and uh, basically I grew up in Los Angeles. It wasn't as hot as it is these days, that's for sure. Um, I think they said, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley and I think they said in the news that it record heat of 112. I don't think it's ever been that hot in like Woodland Hills. Yeah, it was never, never that hot growing up for me. Um, in my mid twenties, I attended in Simi Valley, the Brandeis Bardeen Collegiate Institute. And I don't know if any of you know about that wonderful place. I see some people nodding yes. 
All right. I was a BCIer. I did the, the young adult program and it was a life changing experience as it is for many. And I decided to really focus on Judaic. I wrote my first Jewish composition that summer. Um, and I said two things after, after that, uh, after that summer, I said, I'm going to go back and quit my job and go back into music, which I had not been doing and go to Israel. And a short time Later, I found myself in Arad, Israel, near the near Masada, near the near the, uh, the near the Dead Sea, in a in a wonderful program called the World Union of Jewish Students. Studied in Israel for a year, came back to UCLA, did graduate school, and lucky for me, I was hired by the Judaic Sacred Music Foundation. To, I was commissioned by them to compose Symphony Number no. One Judaica, a four movement symphony based on the lit liturgy of the uh, high holiday services. And in all our research, we've never found a symphony that does this. There's a lot of wonderful Judaic classical music based on the high holy days, but we've never been able to find a symphony that quite does this. So we feel this is very unique. It was quite a challenge. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I moved and navigated through this. One of the, the symphonies of four movements, and one of the challenges was to figure out what melodies would go into each movement. Um, and for every prayer, there are multiple melodies. So you might say, oh, I know that prayer, but we sing a different melody in my shul. And I really had to narrow it down. Um, the commission was to really specifically focus on the Ashkenazic tradition the melodies of Eastern Europe. Our founder grew up in Brooklyn in the 1930s, and he wanted to preserve a lot of those beautiful melodies that he grew up with in symphonic form. So I tried to go to for a lot of very traditional um, uh, uh, Eastern European melodies. Um, I, at first I thought about maybe making the symphony chronological, because as you know, as, uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but the, the, the High Holy Days, or spiritual journey, and you keep elevating your your soul through uh, through the holidays. And I thought that'd be a beautiful thing to do, and it didn't quite work out that way musically. So I had to abandon that. But in the first movement, I wanted to touch upon some of the very central um, themes of Rosh Hashanah, and we begin with the Hatzi Kaddish. There's a, a, a musical motive that as soon as you hear it, you know you are in the High Holy Days. And so even though it's a strange place to start a symphony, it's like a wake up call. We are, this is a high holy day symphony. Um, then I go to a melody for uh, Patach Lanushar, which is open the gates of heaven and hear my prayer, which is recited at the very end of Yom Kippur in the Nila service in the evening, right before evening. And again, a strange way to start a symphony at the end of the holiday, but I was so compelled to, I was so attracted to this idea of to start the symphony with open the gates of heaven and hear my prayer. And, and so there are many beautiful melodies and maybe you know the one I use, maybe not, but, but I use a, a very specific one. We, I touch on the Barhu, the Zohreinu, remember us unto, unto life, or Rosh Hashanah Yikatevun, which is the who shall live and who shall die portion. I always get nervous <laughs> around, around that one. Who's gonna be rich, who's gonna be poor, who's gonna have air conditioning, who's not gonna have air conditioning. Um, and then there's a beautiful melody for the Shema that's unique to the High Holy Days that I put in the first movement. The second movement is kind of the fast, fun movement, and it all revolves around the prayer, the the the, the, the hymn Kiano Amecha, which is the, you know, God is our shepherd, we are the sheep. God is our our sovereign, we are the subjects. And I chose melodies of Hallel of praise, of prayers of praise, and. Um, that was kind of how I unified this, um, and I'll talk about that. And even at the very end of this movement, I want to get a few more melodies praising God. And so I did a little quote of Melechel Koha Aretz, Adon Olam, and Yigdal at the very end. I'll play that for you. The third movement, which is a slow movement, is a double variation where I alternate between Kol Nidre and the uh, Aleinu Hagadol, which is where the cantor, the Hazan, um, goes prostrates himself down in front of the ark and there's a very famous melody and you'll uh, hopefully you'll recognize it and you might be saying where is Avinu Malkeinu in this right well I knew I wanted to save it for the final movement 
And so I couldn't choose which melody. And I actually chose three different melodies of Avina Malkenu and juxtaposed them with a lot of shofar blasting. <laughs> and the whole symphony ends with Tekiagadola. So what I'd like to do now is actually I share with you. have no sound. Let's start, say it again? Yeah. Oh, we have someone on the phone. All right. <laughs> um, they're, they're calling the, 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 the music police. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is share with you a little clip from the recording session from a few years ago. We did the first half back in 2017 and then the pandemic, we were getting ready to do the second half. And I'm lucky that we were just able to do it, like I said, a couple months ago. So here's a little bit from that first recording session. I'll just play like a minute and a half. So you can see the orchestra and what happens in the recording session. So, so, so you, you, you want to have it like the day they bounce the ball, ba, ba, like a ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I didn't want it too choppy, yeah, so that's yeah. why, you know. So yeah, feel free. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit of the live uh, recording, and that's why I'm able to present it to you tonight is because I had a friend film a little bit of it, and, uh, and we have the, the recording mix as well. Um, so what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of a tour, and we will have Q&A. You have a, a chance to ask questions and comment after each movement, but being that I don't want to keep you here until midnight, um, you know, I'm going to go quickly through the movements and give you some of the highlighted uh, melodies. And um, I, I think many of you are coming to the concert and I have more information about that uh, in just a little bit. So here is, the, um, here is the opening of the symphony. This is movement one, and this is a little video slideshow. So as the music plays, melodies will be prompted. And the first melody that we're going to be introduced to is you'll hear the Hatsi Kaddish. That's the introduction. And then this open the gates of heaven prayer. Now you may know that melody, you may not, but part of the idea of the symphony is, you know, not everyone will know every melody, but you're going to be exposed to some really beautiful Jewish melodies. Now, I use the techniques of harmony and orchestration and development to play around with these melodies. So you're not, it's not going to be like hearing it a cantor sing it. It's just for orchestra and it's in the symphony. So it might sound a little bit different, but here's the opening of the symphony.
are. So that's a very opening melody. And again, it might be familiar to some of you, maybe, maybe not, but eventually we move into the bar who, and hopefully this melody you'll know. And I do kind of play around with it. It's a little bit familiar. I change a note here, I change a note there, but eventually we get moving into the call to worship. Here's what this sounds like. Hopefully you know that melody and, you know, uh, uh, it sounded familiar. You're not obviously used to hearing it uh, in orchestral form like this, but I was, I didn't want to make the symphony a medley. And so what composers do in classical music is we develop, we change, we stretch. So sometimes I give a melody very straightforward um, and sometimes I'll play around with it. The Zoch Reinu, which is the Remember Us Unto Life, is a melody that I very much want to give a very straightforward uh, presentation. So I guess when you're asking uh, Hashem to give us life, you don't want to mess around with the melody. So um, here's a little bit of one of the big statements of the Zoch Reinu. Again, there are many melodies, but um, hopefully you know this one. I'm curious, how many of you just by raise of hand know that melody or are used, used to singing that one? So a bunch of you. Um, Rabbi Singer, is that the melody you sing in, in, in the at Temple Bethel? It is, it is. Ah, okay, all um, right. Can I ask you a question just because um, it was in the uh, chat? So, sure. So um, curious to know why you uh, use male pronouns for God because we, you know, I know that's probably where you got you got some kind of translation that had it, but we're trying to move away from using pronouns for God, if that's possible. Well, you know, I consulted with a lot of rabbis and cantors, and look, if you're doing if you're doing a liter like a really strict translation, sometimes it's it's unavoidable. Yeah. Um. God, you know, Avinu Malkinu, God is our Father. Like, yeah. you, you can't avoid that. And yeah. so, yeah. No. you know, I tried. I tried. Not gonna I know. You know what? I had I had a big discussion with Marsha Falk about this. She's a liturgist and she's written very non-traditional prayers. But when she translated uh, Exodus for her new Haggadah, she kept it with male pronouns because that's how it is in Hebrew. So I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's a you know, no matter what I've done, someone has an issue with it. So I've learned right. to live with like, you know, and, and I was sensitive to it and I'll can try yeah. to continue to be sensitive to it. Um, we are trying to work out during the performance at Riverside to project some prompts above the orchestra. We're not sure if we're going to be able to, to manage it, but if we do, I'm going to do my best to use the language that is kind of like is, you know, pleasing everybody. But I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, I want to, I want to hug the Hebrew as much as I can. And, right. you know, this is not a prayer service, this is a symphony. So, you right. know, that's kind of my, uh, you know, I hope okay. that's okay. Um, now, let's get into Baruch Hashanah Yikatevun, which is on New Year's Day, you know, the decree is written and, uh, and on the Day of Atonement it is sealed. And um, I use a melody that's the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
right? And I decided when I was composing this, it's such a dramatic prayer that I wanted to build up little by little. So it starts very softly with little aspects of it. I call it hints of that melody in the woodwinds. And then we build into this big brass statement culminating in a lot of shofar blasting in the trumpets and uh, horns. Let's take a listen. And so the first movement goes on and on. And one of the things I want to do, the last melody I'll play for the first movement is um, I wanted to include a very beautiful melody for the Shema. And um, I stated it twice, one in a solo horn representing one. And then it's a full statement by the orchestra. Um, there are a lot of beautiful melodies, but this one is very particular to, um, to the High Holy Days. Oh, go back a little bit. And so what I did in the first movement is, you know, a lot of these melodies go back and forth between each other and it's not the order of the service, but uh, you'll hear things hopefully that are familiar, maybe some things that are new, but hopefully enjoy it. So that's a little bit of a tour of the first movement. Uh, maybe we, we have any questions uh, that I can address and before we go on to the second movement, if there's anything, if there's anything. Anybody have any comments or questions? Any questions out there? I'll even take complaints. I have a question okay, for look, Ezra, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering how you present this. I, I, I love what I'm hearing. And I know that among Jews who are listening to this, I know you're not trying to create a greatest hits <laughs> symphony, but the audience is going to be looking to pick out those melodies and hear them and say, I know that, I know that, I know the prayer. How do, how, do, how do you present this to a Gentile audience? Well, you know, that was a very good question because one of, the, one of my chief concerns in composing this and in my talks with our president of the foundation is, you know, we'd like to bring these melodies to the world. A lot of the world does not know these melodies because, you know, the, the Christianity, you know, has hundreds and hundreds of years of liturgical music in symphonic form. Box B minor mass, the Requiem by Verdi. I mean, it goes on and on. The liturgy is part of the, the classical experience. And, you know, you're, you're a Jew when you go hear Verdi's Requiem. It doesn't mean you buy into the doctrine, but you hear the emotion of the Dies Irae. You hear the emotion of the Agnus Dei. I mean, it's, it's touching. It's deep. And, um, uh, uh, 
you ride the emotion. And so one of the things I want to do with the symphony, something similar is um, reach into, try to penetrate the, the, the depth of emotion of the prayers and make that a foreground issue so that if you're, you know, try to make it accessible for all walks of faith and all cultures so that you hear emotion. You may not know the melody, but you hear the emotion. Just like when you hear Mosa Requiem, you don't, know how to every, you don't have to know everything or believe everything in that, but you hear the depth of emotion. That was important to me. So it works all on I that. Can, all I can say is may this last a thousand years. Oh, sorry, say it again. May this last a thousand years. Oh, it's very, it's very kind of you. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we, all composers, all artists want their music to have somewhat of a shelf life, <laughs> you know, so we're keeping my fingers crossed, you know, we'll, we'll see, but thank you. And, you know, I think music is a great ambassador and, um, you know, people hear music they love and they associate it with Judaism. It's good. Music can do that. We have a beautiful tradition, a beautiful music tradition in our, in our heritage. Any, anything else before we go to the second movement? Looks like we're good. Okay. So the second movement is the movement that I wanted to, when we, in a symphony, often the second movement, sometimes the third is what's called a scherzo, which is usually a fast, fun movement, usually in a triple meter, three or six, a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this movement isn't really in a three, although parts of it are, um, but it, it takes the place of kind of this fun, lively movement. And I really wanted the, uh, the prayer, Keanu Amecha, to be the central uh, theme. And here is a little bit, I found this on the internet, and there are a lot of beautiful melodies for Keanu Amecha, but here's one that you might know. And, and here's someone <laughs> singing with guitar, and then I'll, this might, this is my, how you might know the melody and then you'll hear what I did with the orchestration. How many of you know that melody? Rabbi Singer does. Ah, <laughs> okay. Well, this is a very popular melody. Um, and this is the melody I chose. And this second movement uses that melody over and over and over again in a, what's called a rondo form, where the melody keeps coming back over and over again. And in between, I use other, other prayers. Let's play the opening. Now that at least you know the melody, here's a little bit of the opening with Keanu Mech.
All right, so that's kind of the opening of the uh, of the second movement. I jump to some other prayers, and here's a little bit of this prayer called Mishana, which is uh, responsorial. It's uh, you know who is like uh, the He who answers our, our Father Abraham on Mount Moriah. You know He shall answer us, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It goes through, and there are a lot of melodies. This is actually a 20th century melody, um, and I really fell in love with it, and so I incorporated it here. And here's a little bit of that. So as you can see, I'm kind of like moving from melody to melody prayer. And it was a real challenge to, to do it and try to make it cohesive. I, try, I tried my best. Uh, I hope it's easy to follow at least the emotion, even if you don't know uh, the specific uh, melodies. And in this movement, I go to some other melodies. I keep going back to the central Keanu Amecha. And at the very end of composing, I said, I really want to fit a little bit more praising of God. And so... I, I did these, I came up with this idea to do these three little quotes, Melech al Aretz, you know, um, and Adon Olam and Yigdal. And let me play for you the last part of the symphony. That's a little bit of the second movement. And although it sounds like the end of the symphony, we still have two more movements. <laughs> so um, any questions or comments about that?
about that. I do movie. have a question. Sure, Rabbi Singer. Uh oh, now I'm, now I'm, no, now I'm nervous. So no, 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 it's not, not anything related to liturgy. It's related to music, of which I know very little. Um, what I'm curious about is that all of these different pieces, I assume, are like different keys and that kind of stuff. Yeah. About as far as I can go. And yes, I'm just yeah. wondering how you're able to go from one to the other smoothly without having a jarring sense of, wait a minute, that's a different key or whatever. I mean, I don't know if that's making any sense. But Well, the answer is very simple. Before I started writing the symphony, I had hair. <laughs> All right. I saw a few chuckles. Um, you know, the piece is what's called very chromatic. And so it's constantly shifting key. And it's the hardest thing I do, but the thing I'm most attracted to in music. I love doing it but it's very challenging. And I write, I'm old fashioned. I write with pencil and paper. And then I go to computer entry with software, but I do a lot of sketching. And what you're hearing tonight was certainly not the first version of any of this. It's a lot of work and work and rework and erasing and throwing out and starting again and fixing. And um, I was even making final changes the days before the symphony was due to, to be delivered to Riverside, literally like the day before, still making changes. I still want to make changes, but um, I work it out in a lot of sketching. And it's, uh, it's I sit at the keyboard, I play it out, I, I write it, what's called a piano version first, um, a short sketch. It's a little bit more complicated than piano music. It's, it's four lines, four stabs. I can spread my ideas out and I work it out there. And, um, you know, it's a very slow, laborious process. Um, but I, I love it. I'm attracted to it. It's like, I wish I were attracted to something easier, but that's, that's my life. I was, this is what I want to do and it's difficult. But um, when you get it right, or you feel like you get it right, there's nothing, nothing like it. Yeah, it sounds very smooth. So, you know, Yashikoah. thank you. I, that's the whole, the, my work is behind the scenes. You should just come and enjoy, you know. Um, so- Are there uh, other, other questions? Anybody else have a question? This isn't a question, but it's a comment. I love the way that second movement that you went from Keanu Amecha to uh, another one and then back to Keanu Amecha. It, it really brought it all together. Oh, thank I you. Really, really liked it. I want to know something though, is crying aloud. This music is so gorgeous and I'm expecting oh. Cry with happiness. I would say crying for the right reason is fine. Oh, yes. If you if you're crying oh, yes. because you know you bought a ticket and it's not what you expected, that that would make me sad. But if you're happy, no, about no, it, no, no, I'm crying to hear the beautiful melodies, some oh. of which I haven't heard in a long, long, long time. Some of which I can sing, um, and I really appreciate this. It's lovely, just lovely. Thank you. I'm very touched by that comment. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that a lot. I, I, I hope people will feel the same way. Uh, others. Um, and, and Steve, you should know that Carol Lee, who was just speaking, um, actually um, is, has been in our choir. And so she's sung a lot of this stuff over many, many years. And she's also our male Ahmeda, who trains all our B'nai Mitzvah students. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, it's a, that's beautiful. Thank, thank you Thanks, so much. Rabbi. Are you are you coming to the concert? Oh yes. Oh okay, oh, yeah. terrific. Oh, I would, oh after, especially after this, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> oh, on that goodness. on that note, I'd like to introduce our director of development of our foundation, Jerry Krautman. Jerry, you want to wave? Wait, Everybody I'm going to put him. Oh, wait a second. Let me put him on the. Uh, add him to the spotlight. Here we are. Oh oh, you just. Eh. Can you go back to uh, just, oh yeah. just the uh, speaker view so I can show both of you. Uh, yeah, but I also want to share the screen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. talk, just talk a little to bit see first. Jerry sure. in the flesh. There he is. Hi. So, <laughs> okay. so I, uh, I have about a few tickets here. And if there's anybody who hasn't purchased their ticket yet and wants to come, um, I'll, my, just, uh, I'll put my phone number in the, in the chat and we'll take care of you. So there's, there's, there's plenty of very nice seats. We have about 40 seats left in our little area. And there are some really great seats in them. I'd be happy to help you. If you have friends- And they're discounted. They're discounted, right? Yes. They're discounted from the top price. So the other thing is that um, if you have friends who thought, well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I really want to come to this, please reach out to them and ask them to, to come because uh, it's going to be a magnificent uh, event. 
So thank you. And Steve, you're going to show him a pretty flyer? Now you, yes. Now, you can show now, I, now I can show. We are very excited. The, our foundation, we have a, a, a block of tickets and we, own, we, we had 180 and we only have about like 40 left somewhere around there. And if once they go, they go. And if you buy through Riverside, I don't think they're going to give a discounted rate. So um, if you're interested still or you want to bring people, we really want to fill the hall. And um, uh, just so you know, if you have any concerns, there will be security there um, at the Fox Theater and, and um, other security as well from, from the police department or as aware. Just, you know, we live in these times. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very, you know, hopefully you know the Fox Theater. It's a, it's a famous theater in Southern California. And, um, uh, you know, they do a lot of wonderful concerts. It's going to be a really, really beautiful event. It's a magnificent hall. And the orchestra is top notch, fantastic. The conductor is fantastic. And they're doing the George Gershwin Piano Concerto, which is amazing. And selections from Hitchcock's film Vertigo with, by composer Bernard Herman. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, Jewish composers and uh, a, a lot of fun music. And they know Tomas Golka both as the uh, director of the symphony, which many people have had, you know, season tickets to, but also he played the violin for us in the last few years uh, for the Kol Nidre service. Oh, Remember that's how right. You mentioned that was. It. Yeah, he's 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 terrific. And, you know, this is this, you know, getting a premiere of a symphony is a big deal, but this is a very unique premiere being that it's uh, it's the first as far as we know, the first High Holy Day Symphony. So this is this is really, we're hoping this is a historic event. We hope you'll come share, bring others. Tickets are going fast, so we hope to see you there. Yeah, these are discounted tickets. Yeah. Instead of paying 80, you're gonna pay 55 for the best seats in the house, so. Yeah, for sure. Such a deal. Such a deal. <laughs> Such a deal. We'll throw in a piece of gefilte fish, uh, you know, if you really need it. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, what I'd like to do is um, share with you the final two movements. And as I mentioned, the, I waited about two, two years. The pandemic interrupted the recording of the final two movements. And we waited and waited and finally did it in this July. I flew to Slovakia. The, it was re recorded in Bratislava with the Bratislava uh, symphony orchestra, uh, studio orchestra. Um, I have a relationship with them. So that's why we did it there. And they are very affordable. <laughs> so, um, you know, but it was a long way to go. And um, they did a terrific job. Now, we haven't posted movement three or four on our website music. The, the videos you watched of movement one and two, they're on our website. But you're getting a sneak peek. Not very, only a few people have heard excerpts from movements three and four. So uh, this is really exciting for me to do. Um, the, what I did in this movement, I'll just give you again, a play a few moments, is uh, the cold nidre, I kind of do, I deconstruct a little bit. The symphony starts with cold nidre, but not the opening. It starts with the middle, this beautiful part of the melody that's on the word uh, shvikin and shvitin. Da 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 di da 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 di da 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 da. That's what, how I start the symphony, and then the Kol Nidre, the opening, da 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 di da da da. That comes in the middle. So I kind of deconstructed that, and the Aleno Hagadol is the famous uh, melody. Uh, where the cantor goes down uh, uh, before the arc. So here's a little bit of the opening. Um, and I don't have a, a video, so I'm just going to kind of point a little bit. <laughs> we'll start with the Kona Dre, and then you hear the Aleno Hagadon. Here we go.
that's a little bit of the treatment. And hopefully, were you able to hear the melody in there that you recognize, the, the Alenu? Yes. No? All right. Well, people may not be familiar with the Grand Alenu, so I yeah. heard it. It's a very, very prominent melody. Now, let me jump ahead to the Kol Nidre part where I have the brass take over the opening of, you know, Kol Nidre, that, that melody, that motive. Go back here. So I don't know, was that, were you able to pick up on the melody there for Kol Nidre, everybody? So one of the things I tried to do with this is, you know, what's nice about doing these talks is that I could share with you a little bit about the compositional process. Do you know how many, how many times is Kol Nidre recited on Yom Kippur? Yeah, three, right. <laughs> so what I did is even though I couldn't do the, I didn't have time to do the whole prayer three times, there are three entrances of Kol Nidre that you just heard. It starts and then stops, it goes back to the Grand Alenu. Then I do Kol Nidre again, and then I change keys and I do Kol Nidre again, the opening. And it was a way for me to kind of bring some of the structure of what actually goes on in the service. Um, now, if you don't need to be Jewish to understand that, so someone asked a question about, you know, what, what will Gentiles think of this? Hopefully you just hear music that might be enjoyable. But if you are if you understand a little bit more about, oh, Kol Nidre is recited three times and there were three entrances of that, it might have a, a different kind of uh, meaning for you. Um, now I do, let me play for you one of the big statements of the uh, Grand Alenu, and then we'll move on to the fourth movement. Um, I saved kind of this uh, big moment where did it go? 30. Let's see where it is. Uh, here's a little bit. So I go back to the Grand Alenu during the movement and it's a little bit soft and then it gets big and I'll, last thing I'll play for this movement.
All right, I wish I could play uh, more, but in the interest of time, I wanna go on to the fourth movement. So that's the slow movement and you get some of the sense of the melodies and the prayers. Any, any questions, any comments uh, before we move on again? I guess you're so clear, they have no questions. No questions. Well, no one's left yet that I know of, so that's, that's a good sign. All right, well, we have one more movement to get through. And this movement is um, all about uh, Avinu Molkenu. Well, for the most part. And let me share my slide. So I couldn't decide when I was writing the fourth movement, I knew I would save Avinu Molkenu for the last movement. And originally I was gonna use the traditional, what we call the traditional. Avinu Malkenu, da 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 da. All right. Um, but where I go to Shul, I go to a Chabad here in Los Angeles, and they do a different melody. They they do the traditional at the very end, but they do a, a, a Hasidic one, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't know it until about maybe ten years ago, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And it even has a little nigum that they sing leading up, and I'm going to play for you a recording of it, and then. I said, okay, I'll use the traditional and Hasidic. And then people kept asking me, am I gonna use the Barbra Streisand version? <laughs> Meaning the Max Janowski 20th century melody uh, that Barbra Streisand recorded and made famous, I think in like the 1990s or 80s or 90s, which is a very famous recording. It's a very beautiful melody. I had to get permission, a licensing uh, agreement from the estate to be able to use it in the symphony, which we have just secured finally. Um, and so I say it made it into the symphony. Um, and so I use these three different melodies and a lot of shofar blasts. Now, let me play for you the Hasidic melody. I have a little video. And, you know, one of the questions was, how do I unify? If I'm using all these different melodies for Avinu Makino, how do I unify it compositionally? That was my struggle. And this little this Hasidic nigun, it was the, the solution for me. So here is uh, the, the Simcha Friedman singing the nigun, and then he'll sing the Hasidic of Vigo Malkinu. You'll get to hear it, and then you'll hear it in the, in the fourth movement. <laughs> So that idea, da 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 all over the place, that is the glue that holds this movement together. And then here's the Hasidic of Vinu Makina. Now, a lot of people don't know that, that melody, but I was very happy to bring it into the symphony, at least for one, uh, one quote. So what I'll do for you now is I'll play the opening of the, uh, of the fourth movement. And I'll let it run a little bit because I open with part of the Hatsi Kaddish, and then we get into the Nigun, and then the first of Vina Mulcano, I'll play a little bit of the Janowski and then traditional, some fanfares, you'll get a tour. And uh, if you haven't bought your ticket by then, I don't know what else I can do, but I, I hope you'll come. All right, uh, so here's a little bit of the fourth movement. Here's a very opening. It starts with a very famous moment from the Hatsi Kaddish. <laughs>
here's the nigun. All right, so you heard the nigun, a little bit of the Hasidic melody. Let me jump ahead to the Max Janowski melody that is very famous um, uh, with a, just uh, in the 20th century. It was a 20th century melody. And I stayed it twice. Here's a little, I do it soft and then kind of big and see if you maybe recognize this melody a little bit. All right, and then what I did is I saved the traditional one for last, but rather than give the melody all the way through, the Avinu Malkeinu, I keep juxtaposing it with a lot of shofar blasting. So let's hear a little bit of that. I think I have it right about here. And then back to uh, Schofroth.
Now it gets softer a little bit, but we got to end big, right? We got to end with that uh, big kind of exciting music. And so I'll play for you the last like, uh, you know, minute and a half where it's all about the uh, development of Avinu Volcano. A little bit of the Nigun. And now you've actually heard the ending of the symphony <laughs> before it's been uh, premiered. So wonderful, wonderful. I, you've gotten a lot of kudos in the chat. People Thank are really you. excited, really excited about coming to the symphony. And also they really love your presentation. Um, I, have you yeah, sure. I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So somebody asked how you move from a piano score to orchestration. Now, that's a giant question, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, oh, such a difficult, it's a great question, by the way. Um, you know, for me, when I compose, and, you know, it's very similar to when I've read up on, other, you know, the, the lives of composers, that um, a lot goes on in my head at one time. It's not like I go from point A to point B to point C. It's more like, I, I always say it's like a plate with a lot of different elements of music on them and the plate sort of slowly starts lifting up. Um, um, you can call me afterwards, okay? Um, somebody needs to mute. So even, even after, even when I'm piano sketching, I'm already hearing orchestration, but I'm not really focused. It's, it's not the foreground. Um, I do a lot of work at the piano. I work things out, but I'm already hearing orchestration. So it's it's not that it's easy to jump, but it's it's there on my radar. I'm writing out things and working with harmony and melodies. And I go, oh, you know, the horn's going to take this. I'm not sure what will happen here, but I really want the strings to do this. Maybe the oboe will do this. I'm not really committed yet, but I already start making decisions informally about that. Where does that come from? I don't know. I, I don't I don't know um how that always works even for me but it just um uh you know part of it is i just hear it and then part of it i have to work out really really carefully um uh, i might hear something in my head a certain way but then actually notating it a whole different thing you know you need all the technique of knowing how to how to how to do that and write try to write well for the instruments and get the right notation and time signature and you know, um, make all that work together. Um, so the sketching is very free. And then it's a series of making hard decisions. Everything after that is a hard decision. And eventually I have to make hard decisions about things. And sometimes I struggle, struggle, struggle with that. Sometimes it goes very quick, um, but uh, that's the process. Uh, sketch very freely and let my intuition kind of flow and then start bringing my objectivity subjective self to it and and start making these decisions and that's where the struggle really begins um thank you um are there other questions uh, it doesn't 
Yeah. Actually, this sounds so exciting. Hmm. Uh, and I can't wait to come. And I have a question for you. Um, sure. Do you know, this is a funny question, how long the concert will last? My daughter is going to be down for a little while, but she has to pick up her daughter from the airport. So what I need to know, the concert starts at four. Do you have any idea approximately how long the concert lasts? Because she would like to come if she can. Uh, approximately six o'clock, six fifteen at the latest. Okay. Um, I don't know how long their intermission is going to be, but the Gershwin Piano Concerto will be first, and it's about a half an hour work. And the selections from Vertigo, I think, are only going to be about fifteen minutes, okay. and then there'll probably be about a fifteen-minute intermission. My piece is about forty-five, so it's really hopefully by six o'clock. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. I great. I hope she can make it. I now, hope so. I hope so too. I have to call her. Now you said something about tickets being available. Can I still get it through the rabbi or do I need to get it through you now? Go I ahead mean, and, and um, do it through me and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get a ticket. Okay? okay. Just email me. Okay. Okay. After I okay. talk to Karen, I'll email okay. you and give you the money. Okay? That would okay. be, that'd be Thank great. You. Thank no you. We'd, we'd love to have you there. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry I'm is used there. to me calling. Yeah. Jerry is used to me calling every uh, couple of days with more tickets and he knows my uh, probably my credit card number by heart by now and he knows exactly where I live. So no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rabbi, thank you very much. Sure, thank no you. problem. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you so much. Sure. This has been a wonderful presentation. Oh, Wait to hear. My uh, daughter I, is a BCIer. I want to tell you that. Oh, who? who? But before you, she's older. Uh, <laughs> and then when I told her that you went to BCI, she loved it. That's you great. That's that. great to hear. Thank you. And my children, too, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Terrific. Yeah, it's a magical place for sure. It was. And then I went up to Brandeis. They had things for adults. She introduced me to it. Terrific. And so I saw Dennis Prager in the whole world. Okay, does anyone else have any questions or comments before we let Steve have the night to <laughs> thank you very a little much. bit? Thank you. Very thank you. Much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Wonderful. You're really wonderful. Thank you so much, Steve. We really thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you very Can't much, everybody. We'll see you on the 18th. See you on the 18th. Thank, thank you. you. And thank bye you, bye, Jerry. everyone. Bye -bye. Thank, you, Bye. thank you, Rabbi Singer. <laughs>